Bird brains. Bird brains. Bird brains. Hey everyone, thank you for um, watching my very first video. This is um, my new channel called Bird Brains, and it's an educational channel about anything bird, anything bird related for the twitchers amongst us or anyone who just has an interest really. Um, so for my first video, I think this one's going to be split up into two sections because it is quite a big topic to cover. We're going to talk about orders. And as you may or may not know, every animal in the whole world is placed into a category. You know when you go to the zoo and you see um, the name of the animal and then it's got the Latin underneath? Well, there is a reason for that and it's because whenever one animal collection may want to take this animal and trade it with this animal collection, it's just so we can know that we've got the exact animal that we're expecting because some animals look the same and so it can get a bit confusing. You don't want to breed the wrong thing with the wrong thing. And so every animal in the world, as I was saying, has got this classification. We call this its taxonomic rank. And this um, has these um, steps. Everything at the start comes under kingdom. And kingdom is animalia. This covers all animals. Every animal you can think of. All will come under animalia. Okay, so that's the very, very top of this ranking system. After that, we have phylum, and phylum is essentially, does it have a backbone or no? Um, if it does, the word for this is chordata, to have a chord. And of course, birds all come under chordata, so you can see where it's all coming from, and eventually the branches get bigger, the tree gets bigger, until you've found the very, very species that you're looking for. So we've got kingdom, we've got phylum, and then we have class. And there are five different classes, and all birds come under the apes. Uh, short for avian, apes, okay. So we have kingdom, phylum, class, and then it comes down to order. And this is where it starts to break apart even more. And this is what we're gonna talk about today, all of the different bird orders. But uh, before I go into that, we'll just finish the, um, the ranking system because we go kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. All right, hold on, my phone's ringing. Okay, sorry about that, it's, uh, I'm back. Um, so yeah, the taxonomic system, uh, taxonomic rank, sorry I should say, um, is very, very, very important in classifying animals, essentially. And there is a very um, addictive and very annoying music video somewhere, which I'll try and link in the comment section. Uh, so check it out, it does get stuck in your head for days and days, warning, but um, it is very, very useful, okay? There are 28 different bird orders in the world, and these are split into two different super orders. Uh, the first super order is called Paleognathi, or the American Paleognathi, and this concerns flightless birds. So you've got things like kiwis, you've got emus, ostriches, rears, and this is all one order on its own. Although it's not so much classed as a super order nowadays because it makes no sense to have just five of one family when you might as well just chuck it in with, with all the rest. Neognathae gallianserae, or sari, again, if you're American, um, covers all of the other birds, all of them. And because there are so many in this um, category, what we're going to do is break them down um, alphabetically. Uh, hopefully tell you what kind of birds are under each category, ways to remember them, um, as well as characteristics as well, because most of the time that is how that these animals got into those classifications, is it? Um, in the first place, as well as like biological aspects as well. So we're going to start with the A's and the very first one on the list is Asipatry forms. Asipatry forms. And this is all uh, diurnal birds of prey. So this is um, your uh, kestrels, your falcons, your eagles, buzzards, and sometimes you will see at the zoo when if they have the whole ranking taxonomic ranking system on the enclosure um, it may say asipatry forms it may also say falconiforms and these two are kind of interchangeable depending on where you are um, what zoo you're at what they want to use essentially it is the same order the way i've remembered this is probably a, a bit of an odd one um, asipatry forms I just kind of imagine um, your little kestrel there with his little tree mug going, oh, I sip a tree forms. I sip a tree forms. I sip 
a tree forms. I don't know, it helps me. It may not help you. You may find your own way to remember this. Probably not that one. <laughs> and seraphons is quite an easy one to remember because it sounds like ansiphones. So this is mostly waterfowl and this is your ducks, geese, swans um, and seraphons. So little goose, quack, 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 quack. ansiphone message and seraphons. <laughs> Uh, so this is, yeah, um, anything with a rounded body, short legs, webbed feet, sometimes long necks, excludes ducks. They don't have long necks. Next on the list we have apodiforms. Apodiforms, or formes, depends, you know, what you want to say. Um, <laughs> over here in Britain, I don't know whether they have it anywhere else in the world, but we have this advert that used to be, called, that used to be for body form, and it was for, like, women's products, and it used to go, ah, body form. So... That's how it's easy to remember. Ah, body form, body form for you. Okay, and this is high speed flyers. So we've got things like swifts, uh, things like hummingbirds. And these can be recognized by the short humerus. This is like this part where the wing will connect with the shoulder blade. And we're gonna go on to caprimulgi forms. There's 118 different birds in this um, order, and primarily they are ground-dwelling birds. They're insectivorous, meaning that they eat only insects, mostly, and they are ground-dwelling, so they don't often fly. And this is birds such as uh, nightjars and any kind of relatives to um, the nightjar. To remember it, um, mm, caprimulgiforms, it is a difficult one. Um, essentially I think of Cap Capri, uh, the island, or Capri Sun, the kids drink. Okay, uh, next, next, next is uh, Caridriiforms. If you're a bird expert and I am pronouncing that incorrect, please mention in the comments because this is meant to be an educational channel. Share, share the information. Um, but I say Caridriiforms. Caridriiforms. And this is all shorebirds, any birds that live near um, near the coast and mostly that eat invertebrates. This covers things like uh, oyster catchers, um, sandpipers, uh, oh, seagulls, seagulls, really annoying seagulls. They're under caradrying forms. And this is a really big order of birds. There's over 330 different kind of families in this order. Um, to remember it, carry dry forms, I kind of think of, well, shorebirds, they're going to be wet, carry dry. Can you dry this? Can you dry this for me? Carry dry it for me? The, the, it sounds similar. There's a link there. There's got to be a link there. So, uh, carry dry forms. Next is circoniforms, and these are very uh, long birds. This means like long legs, long bills, uh, sometimes long necks. And this is things like um, herons like storks, like ibises. They are generally water birds, but they don't have the webbing between the uh, between the toes there. Uh, flamingos used to be on this list, but were taken off, um, interestingly. And for some reason, in 1990, they added uh, vultures, uh, New World vultures, to this order. This isn't often displayed in animal collections. Vultures still come under falconiforms or acipitary day. I think it's because when they did biological research into vultures, some people believe that they were more closely related biologically to herons than they were to other birds of prey. So um, it's still it's still all a bit up in the air, but most places will still class vultures as acipitary day. However, uh, Circonidae, sorry, Circoniforms, um, Circoniforms, I like to imagine like a little heron with his little monocle and his top hat, Circoniforms, because you can't use body form again because that's already been used. There are only uh, six families in the next species and this is Coliforms and these are sometimes um, called mouse birds because the way they move they kind of scurry. I remember coliforms uh, by cauliflower, nice and easy. Um, and so the six that are under this category, red back, white back, white headed, red faced, speckled, and um, blue uh, naped. 
mouse beds, coliforms, cauliflower. Next we have columbiforms and these are birds with uh, very stout bodies, rounded bodies, very short necks and they're known to be able to drink by sucking up water rather than most birds which will fill up their beak with water, tilt their head back and let gravity take the water down. So uh, columbiforms um, don't do that, they can suck and this is pigeons and doves and this is my favourite Latin name. Um, Columbia Columbus and which is wood pigeon. So the way I remember this is when you watch a film and at the very beginning when all of the adverts come up um, like the sponsors and the people it's made by produced by and you have Columbia which is the lady with the torch. Imagine her with pigeon heads. Columbiforms. Yeah maybe might work don't know works for me. Okay. Okay beaters, rollers, uh, kookaburras, kingfishers all come under the next category and this is birds that are often tropical, mostly very colourful and eat fish and insects. They're normally known as wait and see predators so they'll wait, they won't hunt, they will wait for um, prey to come across across them, across their path. Okay, And these, these are called coraciforms. Um, and this is spelt with two eyes, the same as Sir Coniforms uh, was earlier. This is two different two eyes, um, and remembered by, of course I've seen, of course I see forms, choristy forms. Next we have cuculiforms, and there is a clue in the title here, cuculiforms. So this is cuckoos um, mostly. So this is cuckoos. This is roadrunners. This is churicos. So this is anything that's got a long, strong tail and normally a bill that will curve down slightly. And they are mostly insect eaters and they can also be mostly greys and browns in colour. Cuculiforms, uh, cuckoo, cuckoo, it's easy to remember, cuculiforms. We're going away from C's now and we're going on to G's, there's nothing in between. The first one in the G category is galliforms and this is heavy bodied ground feeding birds. So the most popular in this category is chickens um, and this is things from like your red jungle fowl which is the ancestor of the chicken, gallus gallus, and then up to modern day chickens which we keep as pets, gallus gallus domesticus. This also covers um, turkeys, it also covers quail, partridge, pheasants, uh, peacocks uh, <laughs> and in my head when I remember this it's more of a noise than it is actually related to anything so I like to imagine a little turkey going -la 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 forms. so just yeah keep that one in your head Galliforms. So I'm going to stop it now so you don't get so bored of hearing my voice but thank you so much for listening to uh, my very first video um, hopefully there is going to be a second video of the, um, of the exciting world of bird orders which carries on after this, after what happens after G. Um, if you've noticed anything that you want to comment on, please feel free to do so. This can be anything, um, any kind of criticisms, anything that you think I can do to improve these videos. Um, or nice things, nice things are good as well. Please feed me compliments, that's good too. Um, but yeah, essentially um, that is it. And I hope you enjoyed it and um, catch you on the next one. Bye.